Hi all, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Ollie and this is Simply Stitchy. This channel is where I share my passion for sewing through how-to videos, tutorials and sewing tips. I collect and have been known to sew from sewing patterns when I get a spare five minutes and I've also got an ever, ever increasing collection of vintage sewing machines. My videos will cover the machines the patterns and general sewing information and sometimes I'll throw in a little bit of history to boot. Today's video is one that I've had on the back burner for I forget how many weeks now. I think it was before Christmas when I thought I was going to be doing this one. Um, it's actually making another one of these hats with Simplicity 5308. Um, the reason why it's taken me so long to get around to this one is because I actually forgot where I put the fabric that I was going to be using. Um, this is the fabric and once I'd remembered what it was that I was doing last time I saw it, it was like right there. <laughs> I actually used it in the video um, on how to match fabric to um, the different patterns that you can get and this was one of the examples that I was using. Uh, I'll put a link to that video in the description box below. Uh, but as I say what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be stitching um, this hat here with this um, thrifted curtain fabric. So without more to do let's get into it. The star of today's video is Singer 128 from 1928. Now you've met this singer before, um, she was actually in a video where I was comparing a Singer 27 treadle to a 128 hand crank. I'll put a link to that in the description box below for you. Um, she's going to be stitching the hat with us today, so before we can do that what we'll need to do is get her threaded up and ready to go. Oh, talking about threading, um, I recently did uh, two videos, one on how to stitch thick layers of fabric with domestic sewing machines and one of the viewers came back with a really handy tip that I forgot to mention in that video. Um, Henry said if you're sewing heavy or thick layers of fabric make sure that you use the right thread as well as having the right needle because that will make it a lot easier to sew the heavier fabric. And another video that I did on whether you can use old thread in a sewing machine. Um, Sarah from Budget Sew came up with a really good tip um, about wooden cotton reels. Instead of throwing away wooden cotton reels you can actually use them for French knitting which I thought was an absolutely brilliant idea. So thanks to both Henry and Budget Sew for those really great tips. If you want to sew along and make your own hat with me all you really need is any hat pattern because hats pretty much usually get made up in the same way so whatever hat you fancy you're going to need obviously your fabric and your pattern pieces now I don't cut patterns I always trace the parts that I'm going to need for doing that particular project which is what I've done here you'll also obviously need matching thread which in this case I'm going to go with a red thread and for when you come to making um, the peak part of the hat that's this bit, you're going to need some um, oh, it's upside down, either stabiliser or interfacing. Okay, my fabric pieces are telling me how many bits I need of each. Um, I'm going to need whoops, two interfacing and two of the fabric for the brim or peak. I'm going to need, this is the side of the hat, two out of the fabric and two out of the lining. Uh, for the main uh, fashion fabric for the hats. I'm going to need four from the fabric and four for the lining and then obviously there's the hat band Oops. that just needs one of those and it's upside down. Tilly me. There you go. When it comes to cutting out your fabric it doesn't really matter whether you've got your fabric right side up or if you use a fabric with the wrong side. Um, obviously if you've, if you've got right sides together and you're cutting out on the wrong side you can mark your fabric markings on your fabric and it, nobody's going to see it so it doesn't matter. If you're coming to match your patterns or make sure you've got your nap 
going in the right direction, you need to have the right side up so that you can actually see what the right side pattern is doing so that you can match it up just that little bit easier. Now what I'm going to try and do with this fabric is because it's got a nice um, kind of like embossed design on it is make sure that I've got that pattern all going in the same direction so that it doesn't stand out too much on the hat and cause like a different um, colouring effect. Now that we've got the pieces cut out what we need to do is we need to take a front and a back and a side piece and stitch them all together so that we've got half a hat and to do that I've marked because the fabric looks both the same on both sides I've marked which one's the wrong side on each piece so we put right sides together to stitch the pieces together and what I'm going to do is match up the single notches on the first set and then take it to the sewing machine and start to sew. Okay, when you've sewed both sides of your hats, the next thing you have to do is stitch both halves together. You should now have two hats, a lining and an outer. So now all we've got to do is sew them both together. To sew both sides of the hat together, what we need to do is put the wrong sides facing. So turn your lining inside out, put your hat the right way out, the, the outside, and pin one to the other. So that you've got the seams facing and then you just stitch it together like that. Line up the seams as you go and pin it. With the lining inside the hats with the wrong sides together use a basting stitch to sew the two hats together. Clip them first to make sure that the lining doesn't move around as you sew. The next thing to do is to add gathering stitches. One row needs to be just inside the seam allowance and the other one needs to be about a quarter of an inch from the edge. I'm using a seam guide to measure five eighths of an inch. Now the reason I'm using five eighths of an inch is because I checked the pattern and that's what it said that I should be using. Now up until this point I've been using three eighths of an inch as a seam allowance because I'd misread it when I started to sew. Did I realise my mistake when I got to this point? Did I fix it? Nah, of course I didn't, because I'm a muppet. The seam allowance hiccup is why future me at the end of the video had a slightly bigger hat than she thought she was going to get. Next, we need to stitch the hat band. Turn it so that the right sides are together and sew along the short end. Make sure you line up your notches for this one so that you make sure that it's nice and central. When you've stitched it, press the seam flat, with an iron preferably. You can use your fingers and finger press it, but it doesn't work quite so well. My iron's in a box at the other end of the house, so I finger pressed it because, well, did I mention that I'm a bit of a muppet? I'm also a little bit lazy, and using my fingers was quicker than getting the iron out of the box. Next, we need to fold the band over. 
Those dots are needed later to line up with the brim. So if you haven't already marked your dots on your hat band, pause the video, go grab your pattern and make sure you get those markings on there. You're gonna need them. Don't worry, I'll wait. Hey, welcome back. Now fold the band in half lengthways. So the right sides are on the outside. And now you need to line up the seam and clip the band together so that it doesn't wobble about. Now we start sewing the brim or the peak of the hat. Basically what we need to do now is you need to make a peak sandwich. If you're using iron-on interfacing, iron a piece to each of your brim pieces. Make sure you do that on the wrong side of the fabric. A good tip when you're using interfacing is make sure your interfacing is um, shorter than the actual fabric so that the interfacing stays out of your seam allowance. You'll, you'll see that it will sew together easily. I use stabiliser and I only needed to put the stabiliser on one side because obviously the stabiliser is just that little bit thicker than interfacing. And yes, as you'll see slightly later on, I did manage to cut the stabiliser just a little bit too short. But never mind, it'll still work. Okay, with right sides together, your interfacing should be on the outside of your sandwich at this point. Double check that you have the right side of your fabric on the inside. Trust me, you don't want to be stitching this so that when you turn it the right way out, your interfacing will be on the outside. It gets dirty real quick and it's not a great look. Stitch the brim along the large curved side. Remember, it's a curve, so make sure to clip it. It'll turn better and a lot easier when you come to turn it the right side out. Or you could use pinking shears. If you go along the whole length with the pinking shears, this will also help reduce the bulk of the seam, which again will make it easier to turn it the right side out and it will lay flatter. Lie flatter? It'll be flat. Gently tease the seam as you turn it the right way around again and use your iron to press it flat. I'm going to be using my hands again because, well, the iron's in a box and if I'd have thought about it, I could have set it up before I started filming. I didn't, so I'm not using it. This is bad. You should use an iron. Don't be me. You'll get a better finish if you use your iron. Oh, and you might want to use a pressing cloth too, um, depending on what fabric you're using for the hat. You don't want a hot iron scorching your peak. The next thing that we need to do is to do a basting stitch across the open edge of the peak. The next step is to top stitch right along the edge of the brim on the curvy side. Now what the top stitch will do is it will give it a nice crisp finish. Now I love my 128, and I must do because I've got at least four of them um, and they're pretty similar to the, the 27 that I've got as well. When it comes to the bobbin system, the vibrating shuttle, I'm really not a fan. I find them finickety, fiddly and frustrating beyond belief and it's a good job I took the soundtrack off the next few slides or you'd have heard some more language starting with an F. It's around about here that my bobbin ran out. I've left the, the part where I'm fiddling about trying to rewind my bobbin in to show you that 
also it's, it doesn't matter how experienced we are we all struggle with our machines from time to time none of us have projects that go smoothly from start to finish every time we pick up the sewing machine and in this particular instance the problems that i were having weren't just related to the sewing machine but they were also user error at some point when i put my thread on top of the sewing machine instead of getting the spool through the center of the reel i was actually going through one of the side sections which is why the cotton reel was wobbling about too much and why it kept falling out of the thread guides Put a clip by your marked dots on the hat band so that you know where they are. Then clip the brim to it. The open end of the band needs to match the open basted edge of the brim. Line up the ends with the dots on both sides and then turn so that the brim lies flat against the edge of the band. Then clip it and ease out the band and the brim so that they're level as you go around and then you just stitch the two together. the band brim combo to the main hat section. The brim should be next to the main hat and it should be sticking up and the band should have the open side facing down. When you, The clips that you see here, um, they're on the open edge and obviously the bottom of the hat. Once it's stitched on, turn the band inside the hat and clip and make sure you press it with your iron, which you have set up. You want to make sure that your seam line forms the base of the hat and that you get that line crisp along the edge. All you need to do then is just hand sew the band to the lining. And here's the finished hat. I'm not entirely sure I like the brightness of the red, but it's actually turned out okay. It's a little bit bigger than the original hats, but then it's a different fabric so it's worked just that little bit different in the pattern. I hope you liked the video, if you did give it a thumbs up. Why not consider subscribing to my channel um, and check out some of the other videos that I've done. This top one is one that YouTube thinks you might like to watch next and this bottom one is one that I think you might like to see next. But whichever video you do check out I hope to see you back here for the next one. In the meantime, wherever you're sewing, whatever you're sewing with, embrace your creativity and have fun. Thanks ever so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.